what type of different design patterns you have used um, strategy factory vendor patterns then uh, mostly these are not factory patterns okay. mostly the strategy uh, as you have used factory design pattern how it is different from abstract factory design pattern so abstract factory we mostly use it for um, like getting another factory like uh, which returns another factory which uh, we can utilize it for um, uh, creating uh, another object and factory is used for creating it is like a two layer uh, factory but okay if i remember it yeah it's uh, another layer of abstraction over simple factory design but okay. so all the configuration is done with yaml files on yes at the rate the enable is also there on the spring boot application enabling uh, eureka something like that on the spring boot application we do to enable any spring boot i mean creating any eureka server eureka yeah yeah, yeah yeah something like that yeah enable Somewhere eureka server yeah. yeah at the rate at the rate yes. yeah. Hmm. yeah that but Uh, why YAML files were used instead of application properties? Do you have any idea? YAML files is being. We are also using YAML files only. Property file we are not using. Spring profiling is for using. No profiling you can do with application properties and YAML as well. Both supports profiling, so that is fine. But in the case of application properties, everything. Uh, uh, YAML Achha. can yeah YAML can identify the data type. So suppose if you give one, two, twenty, three, you don't need to give any anything everything in double quotes. Oh yes yes we don't put it in double quotes. Uh, what are the different types of exceptions are there? Um, basically two types of exceptions checked and unchecked exceptions are there. Checked exceptions are those uh, which are uh, throwable at the compile time itself so uh, so that uh, we can uh, clear it easily and uh, unchecked exceptions are those arithmetic uh, logic and null pointer exceptions that will come at run time only. We can handle unchecked exceptions uh, by using uh, exception handling mechanism like uh, throws and uh, throw keyword uh, we can use our man uh, man made exceptions uh, to the user means uh, for example uh, compile time exception is illegal argument file not found uh, i mean uh, if you are referring to a java class which is not available then uh, a compile time uh, checked exception will come unchecked is uh, null pointer exception array in array index out of bounds exception and um, uh, arithmetic and logic expressions will come at the run time so those we can handle in our own exception handling mechanism uh, while using angular and spring boot can you tell hmm. me the steps you will follow to create a overall project first you need to develop your angular application using your angular command in the new angular application and you can interact your angular application with your backend services through means of http client so you write your services and call your http client uh, by means of rest api so in your bangalore backend spring boot application you write your rest controller by means of at rest controller annotation so mm-hmm. you have your get get mapping post mapping put mapping delete mapping whatever it is and you write your controller and then from your controller you write your business logic and then from your business logic you call your dao and then you hit your database or your underlying services so basically backend services will provide a response to the front end in terms of json so when i hit an url from front end by means of http client my response content type is going to be an application class json so once you hit that url it comes to your backend test controller and based on your your get mapping url that particular method is executed and your business logic is executed and you get your get back your value and you send back your value as an rest response in the form of json so front end will receive the response as a json and then you subscribe to that api call and then you send back that value to your components so component will subscribe that particular api call and process the response and display it in the ui so what is a diamond problem in java yeah in the context of uh, inheritance uh, multiple inheritance in, uh, for classes is referred as a diamond problem because uh, here a single class extends a multiple class that may be the situation where uh, both class can have same method so if we extend that both class with the same method then our class is difficult ambiguity error will come when we are try to get that method, when you try to get the method okay. but multiple in inheritance can be used for interface because only child things are doing implementation 
or interface rights are all. Can you tell me why multiple inheritance not supported in Java? Multiple not supported, but you can achieve through the interface logic. But if you are, a, you cannot extend multiple. You can extend only one, right? In uh, in the parent-child concept. Yeah. But you can implement more. If you are extending the parent-to-child concept, you can only extend only one child. So for that. What are the some good software practices you will follow to develop a scalable, testable, maintainable software? So, what are the thing major things you will need take care so that you can make a web application or any application which is scalable? So, suppose in future there are increased number scalable. of users. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Starting using first that. Thing here is uh, you can go with your cloud platform. Uh, you deploy your application in a cloud platform. From that way, you can maintain your application and you can maintain your scalability as well based on the traffic you are receiving. Yeah. The first thing here is you maintain your application in a cloud platform. There are lots of cloud platforms that are available like Azure, Google, AWS, Amazon are all available. But right now we are using Azure Cloud. So all our services are deployed in Azure and it is built and we have a pipeline to build and deploy it. And release the application. So the first thing here is you deploy your application in the cloud instead of on premises. By maintaining it in the cloud platform, it is easier to provide a scalability. If your traffic is low, then you can reduce your cost by decreasing your scalability. If the traffic is high, they can increase your scalability and accordingly you can optimize your cost. Suppose you are getting error or exception called unsatisfied dependencies in exception then what come to your mind unsatisfied dependency i think it's not like like properly the bean like you like trying to use it not properly injected maybe that could be the reason like like you have those component scans are being done at the start actually and then you are trying to like your in the your base packages if you are not having those things properly it may give you that you have not added those dependency properly and then you are getting that error okay. at the startup or boot up of your application what is the use of optional class the optional class is used to check whether the data which we are getting or that uh, like it is mainly used for checking whether it is null the data which we are getting from the db is null or not so like in optional class we have three methods like is empty or is present or is present or else like that so from that we will be able to check the null conditions okay. so instead of writing okay. whether dot null not equal to null or null instead of checking that we we can directly use uh, optional dot is present or is empty like that in java 8 there are static methods as well in interfaces so what is the use of those static methods okay so i mean to give some concrete definition default methods were there but the thing is like i mean these default methods will also be available in the implementing classes so let's say there is some security related you know functionality which has been which has to be implemented for that particular uh, interface so if it is being defined in the uh, default methods then it is accessible to the all the implementing class but let's say there are some conditions where uh, we don't want the implementing class to use that uh, concrete uh, definition in that particular case we will uh, go with the static one so these static methods are not available in the you know uh, implementing classes in a way it will give a security kind of thing like yeah. a kind of only for the implementing classes can't have access to static method static method of uh, functional interfaces yeah. yeah so in a way it will give a i mean kind of security kind of thing if we want to access that we will have to use the interface reference itself that the parent interface the functional interface reference itself to access the static method okay. the child will both be able to access that what is the difference between a normal service and a micro service? So we can compare like a monolithic application as a normal service and micro service. So in a monolithic application, the application size is used. And if you want to make any modification to a smaller part of code, we have to redeploy a whole application. Also, it has other drawbacks like uh, uh, deployment takes uh, too much time since the code you know, size is large. Then a smaller change need to deploy whole application. And so it is difficult to maintain as well. So in case of microservices, we can split the monolithic application into smaller services as per their functionality and they can be developed and deployed independently. So in case there is an issue in particular service. We so also in, in, in microservices, we can have different applications or in different technologies as well i can have a, a microservice in a .NET as well in python as well and one in java as well and still they can communicate with each other so there are multiple ways of communication between microservices um, it may be asynchronous and asynchronous um, for asynchronous application we use some queuing technology like uh, rabbit mq or kafka and asynchronous call we can simply call a rest endpoint like in java we can use a rest template 
calling other end so suppose you are developing a, a software which is related to share market so you have to store prices and all so what type what data type you will prefer integer float double anything what what you will prefer prices mostly uh, you will prefer the big decimal because the share market there are uh, large values are there and it's a decimal also so you should prefer a big decimal for uh, you should not keep that uh, double or something because uh, there is uh, when comparing or something there is uh, a problem with that uh, okay. and uh, also the number of uh, digits you could store so big decimal would be ideal for that how will you implement concurrency in your java program the concurrency the concept we are using for the uh, asynchronous whenever we are trying to uh, process the multiple what we can say the threads so that the individual threads will performing the different different tasks so let's say ki there will be a, a call to api and that api need to perform the different operations with the inputs so like one call it is taking to the db operation and one it at the same time it is trying to access the other downstream ac- uh, API or application and getting pulling the data from there and similarly if you want to do some other processing on that data so that we can do with the this multi threading asynchronous concept that comes into the con-